Hello and welcome back everybody. We are once more on our way in Dark Souls 2, about to head up the Earthen Peak, and these guys are giving me a little bit of trouble, but I don't think I'm going to take any guff from them. I made sure to pick up all the proper stats to equip my new shield, and I've also stopped by Falcon the Hexer, now that I have upgraded my intelligence enough that he will give me the time of day and made sure to purchase all of his useful hexes as well as a Lindelt chime to act as a stand-in until I can get Kytha's chime, but that should be a while. So no real promises about how that's gonna work out because I am not sure how much I actually want to invest into the Lindelt chime just because I know that I'm not gonna be sticking with it. Kind of similarly to how I haven't really upgraded this uh, cleric's chime very much, but no matter. Oh, I have it equipped just because I was looking at it, but no, the cleric's chime, I'm leaving at plus three because I don't want to waste any large titanite on it. Good old Laddersmith Gilligan right here, willing to give us access to an incredibly cheap item for the cost of a mere 2,000 souls. Really worthwhile price to pay because right over here we get not only a ferrous lockstone but also a twinkling titanite and that is good value. Speaking of value, I'm considering doing a little bit of hearthstone now that goblins vs gnomes has released and I'd really like to hear a bit of feedback from you guys as to whether or not you think I should. I play a fair bit of hearthstone in my free time, I always make sure to clear out my daily quests so I was wondering if you guys would actually be interested in me putting that onto the channel. Because at the same time as I would really like to play a little bit of it, I know that it's quite a far cry from most of the games I play, and I don't quite have the same level of expertise for analysis as I do with most of the other games that I bring to you all, because not only do I, have I not spent a disgusting amount of time learning all the ins and outs of the game, but at the same time I also don't have as much of, I don't know, I don't have as much experience with it as some might, like say Trump or Kriparian or Athene or pretty much anyone who plays the game at a very uh, professional level, people like Hafu. I know there's a lot of people who know quite a hefty amount about it and I don't know if I really should be casting my own uh, my own thoughts in if there's already so much really good theory crafting going on. So let me know what you think. If we were to be playing Hearthstone on the channel, I'd probably be doing arena drafts and showing how far I could get with those, which would pretty well evidence exactly where I am in terms of skill level and what exactly my decision making looks like. So let me know if you think that'd be a fun thing I should do or if I should stay away from it just because it's, oh, fancy drops there. But if I should stay away from it because it has so much coverage already by people who are admittedly more qualified than I to be making statements and judgments about the game. So let me know. Anyways, we are going about, oh, humbug. We are going about this Earth and peak quite nicely. If you get a roll right through, the, oh, I I've done it before, but there's a way that you can actually roll through those that you don't actually get poison from. But apparently, I didn't manage to pull it off. Nope, it is not worth the jump this time. Not with this perspective. So I'm going to completely ignore that sorceress with her chest and the loot on the ground. Take chest however you want, It's it pretty much means the same either way. So instead, oh, we're going to clip through that wall after trying to open the door here and talk to Pate, this lovely fellow. Get him in focus, look at that face. Look at it. I can't seem to focus on NPCs. I don't know what's up with that, but no matter. And we are actually going to drop down and grab this lightning spear because Faith is the stat that we're boosting fastest, and so we'll probably be in range to cast Lightning Spear long before we have any real high demand for our spell slots. Take this guy, ooh, 
take him out immediately. And now we're pretty much set to head right on up to the tippy top of Earthen Peak and take on the queen of it herself, the horrible Lamia Mitha, who is also rather headless. So let's head right on over there and see what kind of work we can get done. Sadly, my spear is already at about half endurance, so I'm going to be... Ooh, didn't mean to trigger that, but I caught myself, so no harm, no foul. And I can just head right on up here, and... Mm, I don't need that. The There is a secret door right there that holds a ring that gives you slight uh, resistance to magic, but considering there's much better magic resist rings later on in the game, I'm not going to bother with it. Man, that bandit headset is really doing work for me. Okay, let's see if I can parry him. Nope, nope, no. No, I cannot. That is not a thing I can do. Oh, dear. No, that's not a door. Those are windows. Why are there windows and doors? In fact, why are there windows not doors? So, let's try that all from scratch. Instead, Pokemon is back as turned. Because apparently he decided to... Turn his back on me in melee range. Thanks, B-Team. <laughs> Honestly, I kid. Ooh, jeez. I kid. There's a lot of people who give Dark Souls 2 an incredible amount of grief and are extremely hypercritical of it just because it was made by, quote, the B-Team. And I'm pretty sure that has actually been confirmed because most of the A-Team from From Software has been working on Bloodborne. But at the same time, they think that fact automatically discredits it and casts it below Dark Souls 1, and I just very much disagree. I know that Dark Souls 2 and Dark Souls 1 are very different in how they handled the lore, but at the same time, I also know that they're very similar in how they handled the lore, and I think they're much closer than a lot of people give Dark Souls 2 credit for, and even worse, Dark Souls 2 is just the better game from the gameplay mechanics. The ideas of tracking and how they changed poise really add a lot more depth to the combat and fix issues that were all over the place in Dark Souls 1. Most people don't really think about directly comparing how the game... Ooh, this guy. How the gameplay of the... Mm, come off it. That's just not even nice. Oh well. I just have to deal with it, but most people fail to accurately compare the actual combat of both games because they're so blinded by nostalgia. And I really think that Dark Souls 2 gets a much worse rap than it deserves because it came second. Very similarly to how a lot of people who played Demon Souls before they played Dark Souls have a very rose-tinted idea of Demon Souls and actually consider it to be a better game. I know German Spy uh, very much rags on... Dark Souls 2, and I really think that that's coming from a place of arrogance, and it's very difficult for me to hear him talking about it, because it, it is so elitist and very forgetful of all the problems that were in Dark Souls 1 and 2, that are completely fixed here in Dark, <laughs> in Dark Souls 1 and Demon Souls, which he came from first. And while I respect that he has a different perspective and experience with these titles, I very much disagree with his uh, decisions upon how they stack up and which ones actually have better gameplay. And believe me, he is very vocal. And in fact, there's quite a few people who are incredibly vocal about how much Dark Souls 2 is a bit of a downgrade from Dark Souls 1. And I don't know. I'll stop talking about it now because it's not very positive, but that is something that I find very frustrating about the Dark Souls community, and I just wanted to get that off my chest because it really feels like there's a lot of arrogance towards the differences between Dark Souls 1 and 2. Ooh, this was a bad idea, but she used the wrong move. Ooh, dear. She used the wrong move to punish me for it, and that means I can hopefully roll all the way out and heal on up because I did that very silly. Completely borked that entire encounter, and 
now I get to heal up far away from all the dangerous sorcerers down there and try again <laughs> without having to waste my Ring of Life protection, which I don't even have equipped. What am I doing? I even bought a second one from Falcon the Hexer so that I wouldn't have to go visit the bonfire each time. And then I completely forget to use it. I'm so good. There we go. That's one tick. And can I just... Throwing knife? No, I disequip. I unequip the throwing knives. Oh my goodness, that rolling attack really came out at the right time. Whew. Once again, they're being very nice about their drops. I already have their skirt, and that's the gloves. All I need now is the hood, which is honestly the most valuable part of their set for me, considering that I could actually really use the points of intelligence right now. I believe it gives you two points of intelligence for wearing it. Two or three. Either way, it's actually quite useful for the run that I'm doing, especially because I'm a bit starved for magic points right now because I focused on getting my quality stats up first and making sure I had enough attunement to actually use spells once I had a basis for faith to get all these heal casts. So any intelligence I can stack on top would be quite handy. Let's see if I can use this spell parry here to make myth a little bit easier. Ooh, right back at ya! Yeah, I'm gonna like this. This is a fantastic shield to have. Oh, she's just gonna walk up to me? Oh, I tried to parry and I forgot that she is actually not parryable. I'm stabbing behind myself, which is a very silly thing to do, but also at the same time, it's risk-reward. It does get me free damage because I can tell by how she swung past me what exactly her next reactions are going to be, or at least how long she's going to take to recover. But after that, oh, I parried too early, but it was perfect, no matter what. So that should really evidence to you how wonderful spell parrying is. Oh, didn't want to go for that. And so I'll back off and Estus Flask. You know, I just realized that I haven't upgraded my Estus. Oh, this is the difficulty about... Oh about commentating over boss fights is that it's very easy for you to get caught up in what you're saying and punished for it hard. But it occurs to me that I've really failed to update, upgrade my Estus flasks, and I'm probably going to want to do that before I do much else. So let's, oh, didn't even get much of a chance to punish her there. Roll right on in, get two hits. I failed to leave enough stamina for the roll, so that's my own fault. Make some distance and I get to heal on up. See if she can come at me, get some blind hits, roll out because that grab attack is nasty. She's getting really low, but I also burned through more than half my Estus in this fight already, so I want to be very careful. If she's not going to do anything, I will take that as a free punish. Heal up, but oh, she came in for the stab. Ooh, I think I can just go in for the last hit. Yeah, there we go. She took enough damage that I could safely go in for the final blow without worrying about the after effects or any sorts of after blow that she was going to get in there. So that's the entirety of Earthen Peak taken out. Here we can see the horrible uh, outlines of these, the sort of cage thing. It looks a little bit better in a bit more zoomed out third person, but quite honestly, these just kind of look a bit shoddy. And so we're going to be heading up this really long elevator here and into the old iron keep. And I'm really interested to see how that place looks in this mod because it's very, generally a very bloom heavy, very bright, very garish area. And I wanna see how that looks when we're zoomed into this first person perspective. You know, I think it looks pretty okay. The lava is obscene, that is the best way to put it, but Aside from that, it looks pretty nice. So I'm gonna rest up at this bonfire. I probably don't need to head back just yet. I'm gonna see if, I, oh, you know, no, we're heading back. We've got too much souls for this. We're, we're gone. Let's take a stop by here, upgrade my stats some. My inch should go all the way up to 10. And I think we start boosting faith because I'd really like to be able to use that Lindelt uh, tal this the Lindelt chime. So let's focus on that. And yes, we have Estes flash shards for you. 
Let's oh, not Estus Flash Shards. Oh, yes. Yes, we do, actually. Do we? No? Okay. Oh, that's right. Sublime Bone Dust for the fire here. So, let's burn a few of those. And hopefully, we can be a little bit better about how we use those going forward. Now, let's head right on back to the old iron keep and we're pretty much set to try and clear the area i've got a little bit of time here so i am gonna try and see how far i can get in the level before i think i need a good stopping point but let's head right on in after we zoom in of course so let's book it and see exactly who needs taking care of well, we've got these first two Alon Knights. They're just regular Knights, not quite Knight Captains just yet. If I start my strong attack early enough, I can stagger them out. Ooh! I thought that I had the damage for it. Apparently, I'm going to need a counter hit in order to kill them with a two strong attack combo. Do I have the Ring of Blades on? I do, so it's not that. Hmm. No matter. We can come right on in. Uh, are you going to come down here? You are fantastic. It, maybe it's something to do with the sweet spot, because it looked like I just attacked him from the normal ranging there. So, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. The two strong attack combo seems to be working out quite nicely for me. It just didn't work that one time. Walk right through that doorway in order to aggro both of these guys and have them come to me rather than entering into a room of three enemies at once and fighting them all all at once so tag him twice and there's one more Alon Knight in this area which I need to take out before I can head on out there and you know I'm gonna use a singular soul right now just a soul of a proud knight because I want 10,000 plus souls in order to purchase all of the Jester set from Mag... Ma oh, not... Magerald of Lanifer, yes. I w wanted to say Marvelous Chester because I've been looking back into Dark Souls 1 recently, which is kind of how I... what brought up the whole... Uh, bringing up that Dark Souls 2 is still a better game. It handles better. But I was going to say Marvelous Chester from the original DLC. So, ignore that. Instead, I want to buy all these... Jester equipment from Magerald here. And after that, you can purchase any singular item. I just go with a firebomb in order to... Uh, oh, I always forget, but once you bottle that, you actually use the regular talk option, and he gives you the Covetous Gold Silver Print Ring plus one, which is very, very useful if you're specifically looking to farm anything. And I think this is going to be right about where I... In the episode, I've got quite a nice set of time ahead of me to clear out the rest of the old iron keep, so this is about this is about right. Thank you all so much for watching. It's been a magnificent time. I look forward to seeing what ne next episode brings. Don't forget to like, subscribe, maybe engage in the comments below. I'd really appreciate that. And you all have a nice day.